Hey, welcome back. And today we're talking about Aptera Motors, an American startup company based in San Diego, California, that just opened pre-orders for their Paradigm car. Their mission is to create the most highly efficient road vehicles in the world with an EPA estimated range of up to a thousand miles for their most premium model. In this video, I want to go over the car and what makes it different, a little bit on the history of this company, including its founders' backgrounds, how you can reserve one today, and also how to invest and whether or not investing is even a good idea. If you just want the spark notes of what I feel about this company, I don't want to waste anybody's time. I really, really like it. I think it's such a cool design and I love how focused their mission is. I have some reservations about scalability and safety. From an investment perspective, it's too risky as of right now, especially once you learn a little bit more about their history, but it's incredibly tempting. But enough of what I think, let's dive into the actual specs of this car. Aptera is about 172 inches in length, 88 inches width, and an overall height of 57 inches, they are targeting to make this car under 2,000 pounds. And if you compare that to the Model 3, which is about 3,500 to 4,000 pounds, this is nearly half the weight of a Model 3. And this is part of the reason why it can go so far with the same amount of energy. If you are half as light, you can already go twice as far. And that's not even including this teardrop type design, which was specifically designed just to reduce drag. It has a cargo capacity of 25 cubic feet. It can go so zero to 60 miles per hour as quick as 5.5 seconds top speed of over 100 miles per hour there's a couple of different range options the cheapest options is about 250 miles and this will run you about twenty five thousand dollars all the way up to 1000 mile range which will run you let's see close to forty five thousand dollars Standard plugs can be used just from any outlet in your house and that will charge at a rate of about 13 miles per hour. If you use rapid chargers, they can give you 500 miles per hour, which seems insane, but again, it's back to they've built this car with the primary focus of keeping efficiency high. It can seat two people. There will also be a touch screen. You have different exterior colors and interior colors. And like I said, this is the pricing range. They have a delivery timing of 2021. Now, what also makes this car really cool is its solar paneled top and all of its options. Actually, it comes standard with a 16 mile of solar charging uh, built in, which is just on the roof. That's with no add-on, you can get 16 miles a day if you are in a highly lit area and you leave your car on the road. They also have additional options where you can add a solar hood, which adds a little bit more surface area and also a solar rear hatch. If you add both of these add-ons together, that will cost you $900 and that will actually add 24 uh, miles of range of charging every day. So if you were to have the full add-ons, you could get 40 miles just charged by the sun every day and for a lot of people that's more than enough to actually handle their daily commute and that would have essentially meant that you have a car that you don't even need to charge that could run indefinitely just through the power of the sun and that's why this is so amazing there are also a couple of other add-ons like safety pilot enhanced audio a camping kit off-road kit and pet kit these are all nice to have but i don't see anything that's a must what does seem to be missing, though, that might be a hindrance in the future is any mention of self-driving capabilities. I think what this car does, at least what it's touted on paper, it does very, very well. But without any mention of autopilot or full self-driving, it could definitely be at a disadvantage when it comes to comparing it with the obvious person you compare it to, which would be Tesla. But that's something maybe they can worry about a little bit further down the road. As of right now, I think if this vehicle could release at these prices and these specs without any major issues. This is definitely a very, very strong competitor, especially when it comes to that range. That range, 400 miles to 1,000 miles, is absurd. When it comes to judging any company though, we can't just look at specs and even videos because unless I see in person your car going up a hill, I have trust issues now because you know I was in a relationship with Nicola and uh, it was pretty abusive. They just gaslighted the shit out of me for like a couple of months. I want to know who are the people behind the company, especially before I buy a product or invest in it. So today we're just going to focus on the three top leaders of the Aptera team. Steve Fambro, co-CEO and former founder. Chris Anthony, co-CEO and former founder. And Michael Johnson, the current co-founder and founder. 
The reason I say former founder is that they actually created this company in 2005 and it was liquidated in 2011. And that's also why you need to be careful when you invest in these companies. Based on my very limited research, nothing incredibly scandalous happened. At the end of the day, they just ran out of money and investor confidence wasn't high enough to get them more money. If you look at Steve Fambro's background, he made a company called Famgrow, which raised $8 million to launch a pesticide herbicide free indoor food production system. I wasn't able to find too much more about him, but it seems like he's always been in the space of advancing clean renewable energy. Chris Anthony's resume is a little bit more impressive. He's the former CEO of Flux Power, which is an advanced lithium battery technology company that supplies batteries for uh, different industrial machines like forklifts and machines that you use in a factory. Flux Power is actually a company you can invest in with a market cap of $115 million. So that's definitely a plus when you have a company that's been around as long as Flux Power has and has had a successful IPO. Michael Johnson is the new co-founder and they call him a venture co-founder, which I'm guessing means that he is the person with the money now. He's actually the president and CEO of SNJ Petroleum, an upstream oil and gas exploration company based in Corpus Christi. There's upstream, midstream, downstream delivers it to the consumers and the actual clients. Upstream is just the ones looking for the oil. So he definitely has one foot firmly in the past, but also one foot in the future. That doesn't really bother me. The, the main takeaway of him having this background is that he probably has money and maybe he wants to do some good now where he sees that there's a, a money making opportunity here. Either way, he's not a no Nobody. He's definitely a somebody. So these are the main players of Aptera. Overall, it seems solid enough, but I definitely need to learn more. If you want to actually buy a car now, you can go to Reserve Now on their website and you see that the first two are already sold out. But actually, when you go to design your custom Aptera, these options seem to all be available. And yeah, you can choose the range, different wheels, interior colors, exterior colors, and also the solar add-ons like I mentioned before. But now to the main part of the video that I'm sure a lot of you are interested in, and that's how do we invest? So investing wise, they actually link from their website into a WeFunder. And a WeFunder is kind of like an Indiegogo or a Kickstarter, but it's for actually investing in companies directly and eventually ultimately getting equity. So I don't actually know that much about how this works so please let me know if i'm wrong but i'm just going to give a high level overview of how this works there's about seven hundred fifty thousand dollars invested from 776 investors meaning the average investment was about a thousand dollars now the valuation cap currently is about 40 million dollars if you invest in this company it's called a simple agreement for future equity and this gives you the right to stock at a later date it is common among early stage technology startups that intend to later raise venture capital capital at the next round of equity financing you will get stock this stock values the company at the most at the valuation cap so based on how much you invest now at some point that will be transferred to stock based on how much the company is valued this is a great way to get in very very early if this company were to blow up later and you're getting in this early what you invest now will be very very valuable down the line but at the same time with a 40 million dollar evaluation cap this is a tiny company and it carries a lot a lot of risk. The fact that they already had to liquidate and go out of business once in 2011 should give you a very clear warning of what could happen. This time though, the fact that the founders came back and it's the same original founders and they're back on board, to me that's actually a sign of strength, not weakness, that they believe in this thing so much that they couldn't move on. If you have an idea that you are obsessed with and you keep coming back to it again and again, which is what it seems like these founders have done, personally that's something I look at favorably. And now that they also have have a new co-founder in Michael Johnson, I also view that as a plus because Michael Johnson comes from oil and there is still a lot of money in oil. They've been making money for decades. Hopefully money is not as big of an issue as it was before. With that being said, building an EV company is incredibly, incredibly expensive. And when you look at videos of Apteria Motors, I think the prototypes look awesome. I really, really do. I love the mission of the company. It's so focused. And even in the videos they've released, they say again and again, Again, we want to make the best, most efficient electric cars in the world. Super clear, simple statement. And based on the estimated specs of their high-end car, it seems like they've accomplished that. Now, can they make 
a lot of it at scale? Can they actually scale this up and fulfill all of their orders? Will there be manufacturing issues? Where the, will there be supply chain stuff? Can they sell it to us at the price they promised? Those are all things we don't know right now. We can look at what happened to Tesla, which in its earlier years, it was so close to becoming bankrupt multiple, multiple times because this is such an expensive investment. Then there are so many variables that we can't control. When I watch videos of their car in motion, I love it. I, I think it's so cool. It's so different. Whenever I see a company doing something this different, even if it seems crazy at the time, like the Cybertruck seemed crazy, that's a bonus in my book because you can't make an amazing company, in my opinion, without doing something that will frighten a lot of potential investors. That's why I'm actually pretty tempted to invest, but if I actually were to invest a thousand or two thousand dollars, it's money that I'm totally ready to throw away, that I'm essentially just donating with the small chance that this could be successful. That's how I see it right now. Once I do more research and I'm able to see them actually deliver vehicles, then my investment calculation would completely change. As of right now, it's a huge, huge gamble, no matter how much I love this company, how much I love their car, but it's very, very tempting. Anyways, that's all I have for today. What do you guys think of the car? Do you like its design? And are you going to invest? Because this is a really cool investing opportunity. Super risky, but very cool. This is Green Knight Training or Scribes Come Knights. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.